So this is the Axis Unseen, my heavy metal horror game, fun monsters and folklore. I'm going to go ahead and give a walkthrough for the demo and play it. And I'm going to play through the intro, which is set to music. It's like a playable heavy metal music video slash tutorial thing. So I pop up this giant warning because some people were like, why is it moving? Why is it cutting? So I tried to make it extra clear that it will cut to the music. Here we go. I mostly made this game as a solo dev. I got someone to do the music and some of the drawings and the journal writings, but the rest is me. And fun fact, that is also me. Uh, me and my wife photo scanned each other with phones to make the characters, including like all these dead bodies that you see around. Like some of them are me, some of them are my wife. Like right here. I built this whole thing using Unreal 5, and it has this thing called Nanite, so you can throw like unlimited geometry at it. This one was particularly hard to scan, because you're scanning someone who's sitting, but they can't be actually at a table, so you just kind of have to like pretend you're sitting in the air. And I sculpted a lot of the models that you see in the background in VR, so it has like a hand-carved look to it because it sort of is hand-carved, because I like, put on the dorky VR goggles and then like sculpt the stuff and shave it off. So now it's actually playable. And I'm playing with the gamepad so you don't hear clack, 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 clack the whole time. But it obviously supports mouse, keyboard, whatever. You can rebind all the controls, you can turn on and off the crosshair, invert X, invert Y, disable screen shake, disable the crosshair, customize it, whatever you want. And you can also change the difficulty at any time. So if you want to play it on an easier difficulty, you can do that, or you can make it harder. And that changes like how many creatures spawn, how much damage they do. I even have a pacifist mode though for the, the opposite of that. So you can just go around and like take pictures of the creatures and that unlocks stuff instead of killing them. Or you could just go the other way and do like permadeath mode where it'll delete your save if you die, or insta-kill where one hit from a creature will kill you. And these are some of the drawings that you see later in the journals. And they're done by this person called uh, Overshia, who did this bestiary for Fallout 76 that I was the lead artist on. And Drew, like all the creatures and had all these cool stories so I really like the style of it so I got Shia to do the drawings for my game also. And I made this fun system where I can pose the skeletons sort of in the world. It's not preset poses so I can have their like feet go exactly where I want them to You'll see like hands wrapped around trees. It was pretty fun. It's kind of like all the environmental storytelling we did on Fallout and Skyrim with all the dead bodies. Only I can do giant skeletons also. And it really matters what kind of surface you're walking on because you'll see a no noise meter there on the bow. And you know, dirt is quieter than rocks. So the rocks make more noise, the creatures will hear you. You can follow their footprints, but they can also follow yours. So you might want to, you know, sneak around instead of running the whole time. And so that's part of why the game is stylized too, right? Because it really matters what you're walking on and you're tracking creatures. And at first I had it completely photorealistic. But it is so hard to see tracks when it's photorealistic, so I ended up shifting it to a more stylized thing. So I figured there's gonna be like a million photorealistic Unreal 5 games also. So I might as well do something distinct and it plays better that way. And also, frankly, it's easier to make the game that way. And it can run on way more hardware because I'm not using all this texture memory to store these giant, noisy textures. Here you can see there's like a magic system too. Some of the creatures are really, really big or they're really fast. So 
there's other ways to manage in the playing field. So now the mute's gonna start to get a little bit more metal. Combat's gonna kick off. Notice this creature has a bony head. If I throw against the horns or the antlers, then it's not gonna do any damage at all. So you gotta shoot under those. They're pretty cowardly though, so they like to run away. big jump in this game. Some people were like, oh, it's too big of a jump, but that's because these creatures are fat, so you can you know, jump out of the way. It's a very intention, actually. You can even upgrade it to go even further. Some of the creatures are way bigger than this even. And actually, when you're playing Centro, you're, you have some of the abilities you don't have at first. This is the Hunter game before you. I make the game look a little easier since I've shot like 10 billion arrows while working on this game. So this turtle has a big shell, right? So the arrows will bounce off the shell if I get that. So you want to get it in the flesh parts. And this one is super fast. So this thing is hook it. So it's best to sort of get the drop on that thing. Otherwise it's really hard even for me to kill that thing. And when you get hurt, you can see this tattoo on your hand kind of light up to show how much you're damaged, and it goes from like warm to cool based on how close to death you are. Your vision will start to constrict a little bit also. And you can refill your arrows at this altar. You might notice there's no like ammo meter, so you just have to pull out your quiver and, you know, check to see if you have any arrows, or check to see what way the wind is blowing giving us like a little bit of a preview of some of the different regions that you move through in the rest of the game. And like these are the altars where you level up once you reach the main game. You collect energy from the creatures and you level up your core stats. It's the giant sculpture of the snake and the eagle which play an important part in the lore of the game. Some of it is just through environmental storytelling and giant sculptures, but you can also find journals throughout the world. take up the bow and you're the hunter who is going to travel to that land to find out like, what's going on and, you know see what's going on in this world see if you can do better than the, the hunter who came before you so now it moves into the main game
so if you missed any of the tutorials in that first part, they all come again here. So it's fine, actually, because, like, you're gonna die anyways. So, so that's okay. It'll tell you again. Get some energy, restock, and move out into the, the game proper. Get some healing crosses here. Fun fact, those are called rowan crosses, and they're used in witchcraft with the branches of, like, a rowan tree. And rowan is one of my daughter's names. So it's a little Easter egg. And now we are in the world of the Axis Unseen. So, wanted a really epic feel to everything where there was giant landmarks to help navigate. I feel like some games just kind of rely on their mini maps and stuff, and it's so easy to get lost. But if I can have, you know, a giant three mile tall skeleton, snake, and bird, those make pretty good landmarks. And it's also pretty metal. And now that I'm in the main game, I have a thing called Spear and Arrow. And you can use this to sort of scout ahead or get an eye, a look around for where you are. So you can shoot it up in the sky and see the rest of the map. And you can go to all those places. Like that mountain is one of the region. Over here, it's like a desert really far away. Something spooky down there. Or you can use it kind of like this to be like, are there monsters ahead of me? Let's see. Oh, I think I saw one. And you can upgrade that so you can like stay in it longer and you have more uses of it because that uses one of the resources, which is magic. And on my bow, you can see I picked up some energy. So it, instead of just showing like regular numbers, I thought that would look weird. So instead it's dots and dashes. It's basically each dot or dash is one of the numbers. So like two dots is two. And you can see there's five and then 10. So that's 250, basically. So 250 is how much I have right now. You don't actually have to know that. It'll tell you at the, the altars where you level up, but I just thought it was like a nice flavor thing. It's more important for people to understand like the noise meter. So I'm trying to sneak up on that thing so it doesn't just murder me. It's because it was somewhere over here. I should, check, should have checked the wind, actually. Like It might smell me, actually, because the wind is blowing in that direction if it's still over here. So all the spawns are randomized too. Oh, there it is. So it's not like a Souls game where they're gonna be like in the same spot every time. The, the only time that happens is there's a few like unique characters or monsters that only show up once, and they are in a specific spot. Everything else is random. Yeah, it definitely smells. Good. But you can't hold it back too too long. Oh, I hit the animals. It's on to me. No, but they're cowards. Come back here. Got my arrow. Okay, we'll see if it bleeds. There it goes. It's bleeding up, at least. I heard something else. So get my arrows back. And you can see how you could have... If it wasn't there anymore, I could have followed this blood trail actually the whole time. Instead of, you know, running after it. Which is probably not a good idea, because I might have attracted something else. Let's see if I can jump high enough up. Initially, I had those arrows, so you had to like go and actually pick them up and like activate it. But it was incredibly annoying because you know it's like, you're like, "Where's my arrow?" Or it would be in a creature, and the creature would fall over, and it's like on the other side. So it's like, you know what? There's magic; they can just fly back to you. And I, I think that works way better. It's so much more fun that way too, and it's kind of satisfying having them just fly back in your quiver. It's kind of like Thor's hammer, but with arrows. It's oh, another one of them. So these are the gates where you can lock in your energy. Because right now you can see it's blue on my bow. That means if I die, I will drop that amount. But if I bring it over here, it'll lock it in and move it over to the right. Now, if I die, I still have it. So it's like not quite as hard as like a Souls game. And here's some of the journals that you can find. Like I'm not gonna bother trying to read the whole thing right now. Also, time is actually still passing, you might notice. So that's a good way to get a wolf to eat your face. So I don't quite have enough to level up, 
when you have that, like a little icon shows up on your bow of the horn god. It's the same one that's on your hand. So I need a little bit more before I can actually level up. So I'm gonna head this way. Oh. Oh, jeez, there was one behind me. Where did it go? They, they work in different ways, too. Like, the wolf likes to go on this kind of erratic path, so oh, that way you can get it. Whereas the deer kind of runs straight at you, and then backs off and attacks again. So I want every creature to have sort of a little bit of a different attack behaviors. That, I think that keeps it a lot more interesting, so it's not just like reskins of the exact same creature. something. Oh, there's a deer. I think I can make it from here. I mean, I've played a lot, but I don't know about... Oh, I hit it. I don't think it knows where I am. Oh, it's making a run for it. Well, hopefully it dies and then I get my arrow back. Maybe should have not taken that shot, but I, I saw four arrows left. Not three, because there's three in the quiver, one on the bow. So that's actually four. I see a lot of people playing streams, and they're like, oh, I got I have three arrows. Like, forget about the one on the bow. It's not like you're putting it back in the quiver when you're checking. And the weather and time of day, that's all completely dynamic also. And it depends on where you're at, too. So some regions have, like, more rain or snow and completely different colors and fog. So this is just the starting forest region. And these skeletons upgrade your starting amount on different items. So now I have like more wooden arrows when I start or when I go to like one of the things to restock arrows. Oh, I think that's that too. Where are you going? I think it saw me, actually. I uncrouched there for a second. Some of them will attack again if you manage to get close to them and they're trying to run away. But if you're too far away and they're trying to flee, they'll just be like, no way, <laughs> just run away again. So you gotta be careful. But later you can get this nice ability where you can make your arrows bleed for longer. Because they will just sort of stop bleeding after a while. It'll, like, the wounds will clot up. Because otherwise you could just be like, I'm going to just shoot one arrow into this giant creature and eventually it will die. Which was, you know, super broken. So, that prevents that. But, if you get a bunch of arrows into them, like, that stacks the bleeding and will cause them to bleed out more. And here you can see another giant skeleton. It's a good way to get, like, energy for free if you find dead bodies. But that only shows up once, right? Because I collected it. If I die and drop it, I need to make sure to get that back. And you can see how I have the hand on the tree, like I mentioned. I thought that was pretty fun. It basically lets me set up, like, uh, corpse jumping puzzles sometimes, too. Really, it's not so much of a puzzle, but you can, like, climb up a big structure by using a giant skeleton. Which I think is pretty fun. There's definitely something over there. Yeah, hear them. And I'm trying to get to this big beam, right? Like, I don't need a quest markers and mini maps and all that. Like, you go to the giant beam. I mean, you don't have to. There's more than one way to beat the game, but that is sort of the what we call in games the golden path, which is like the core way that you're supposed to play the game if you're just following the main objectives. No, don't run away with my arrow again. run out of arrows if I keep doing that. I think I hear something past these rocks. You can see I can still orient myself really well. It's like there's the giant beam, there's the two mile tall mountain skeleton on the front of it. There's a big ridge that splits that area. Oh, come on, it's gotta bleed out now. Oh, come at <laughs> You can 
see some green over there. There's like some poisonous mushrooms sometimes that have these poisonous areas around them, so right now I want to avoid that. Later you can get power so that you can just breathe the poisonous air. But there's a whole heart rate system, right? If you're like sprinting and jumping too much, your heart rate gets too high and then those powers will shut off. spend a lot of time tuning how it feels to shoot the creatures. So there's a screen shake, there's like a subtle slowing of time. It is bigger too if it's like a critical hit where you hit like one of their weak points or you get a shot from stealth. Because you'll do a little bit more damage if they're not aware of you. Just to help encourage like that stealth gameplay. You don't have to. Like some of the people that play this game just like sprint the whole time and stab the creatures in the face. And you know, if you want to do that, go nuts. I'm not going to say it's effective. It's certainly high risk, but, like, you can do it. It does a lot of damage, as you've seen, when you stab the creatures, so you totally can do it. But it is harder. So I'm almost there. So, this, you know, sometimes I might get impatient. I know that it'll lock in my energy if I get to one of the gates. And, you know, I may be game. I know there's one here, so I'm going to make a run for it. You might see a like, floating tree or rock occasionally. Like I'm aware of those and I'm planning on doing the pass to fix those before I ship. Woo. So I have enough to level up, so I'm gonna go into the safe area here. So this is the area in between everything where this is how you fast travel in the game also. Because I didn't want a map for that either, so instead you go through these gates, and you can sort of see through the gate to what was there. Like, there's that triangular sculpture there. Because I tried as much as possible to keep it all in-world, you know, on the hands, on the bows, the quiver, all of that. The one exception, really, I, even though I tried not to do this, is these things will pop up a menu for leveling up. Like, do I want to level up my magic? And here's what it does. Because at first, I, I do have a journal that you can pull out and read it, but it felt excessive pulling out the journal also, and then people still wouldn't know what button to push. So that's the one exception. But here's the journal where you can read about all your stuff and the different powers. And you're nice and safe in here, you don't have to worry. So I am going to level up my sneak. So. That'll make it so I make less noise, but also I can move a little faster when I'm crouched. Eventually it's like almost full speed, really. It's not sprinting, but like as fast as walking. And back here is the rest of this area. You can see all these pedestals, right? Like, ooh, mysterious. What's that? Here's what it's for. It's, there's these creatures now. Like, those are the ones that I've killed. So now I unlock journal entries for each of the creatures that I've killed. Which is so far, just a few. But you can see in this region, there's there's quite a few actually. And that's just for that region. You'll notice like this, it's all full of darkness and trees back here, right? But eventually, the other regions will sh start showing up here and unlocking sort of like new wings to this space. You can see the different equipment you've collected and read about it. Like your obsidian dagger that's made out of a human jawbone and obsidian, you know, totally normal stuff. Or the, the Rowan Cross that I mentioned. And you can kind of get an idea of like how much stuff there is to find by looking at this without me showing like the explicit bar that fills up like, oh, you're level one out of five or whatever. Like again, something really natural and in world to sort of communicate that to the player if they happen to notice. If they don't, that's fine. But some of it's pretty obvious, like, oh, here's these pedestals for creatures. That's a very big pedestal. <laughs> that obviously implies there is some kind of giant creature that I need to kill. That, to me, is just so much more interesting doing it that way, because I want it to feel so natural like that. So now I'm going to go get a power. starting to rain. I'll 
also. This is the Tremor's power. And basically, this is a tattoo that lights up on your hand when something's moving nearby. If it's a cool color, it's small, it's warm, it's bigger. So I'll know if something's nearby. I don't know where it is, but I do know that it's near me and it's moving. If they stop moving, the tattoo shuts off. So I'm making my way to the next power now, which is somewhere over that way. And here's something very big. Not too close though, the tattoo's not going off yet. Somewhere over there. Maybe I'll try and Let's see. It. This thing is like shockingly sneaky for being clearly very, very big. Oh geez, that is way closer than I thought. So I don't want it to like, hear me, but down there, it's right there. Oh my god. See, I told you the thing is sneaky. It was literally right in front of me. So I'm gonna run to get away from that thing so it doesn't attack me with its brute attacks again. But yeah, you can see it way back there. But it it can follow my footprints. Is the thing. Like, yeah, well, after I kill this wolf, I will show you. Hopefully. Oh no, I gotta pull it all the way back? There we go. Okay, but yeah, if you look when I'm walking, I'm leaving these footprints here. And it sees those. So it's gonna slowly make its way down this hill, tracking me. So I kinda need to keep moving. Not too fast though, because then everything else will hear me. Which I do not want. Oh, great. There's a wolf back there, too. So I'm going this way. I'm going to heal just in case something attacks me, actually. Oh, great. There's something else down here, too. Oh, jeez. Right there. Bigfoot, run! Oh, jeez. Oh, may it punch you really far. Oh, so you gotta watch out for the falling damage on those guys. Okay. Oh, jeez. I need to upgrade my strength so I can pull the bow back up. Oh, got it. Get a shot. But I'm running out of arrows. Ah. Those guys are intimidating because they just come right at you and they take a lot of damage. So you gotta really aim your shots. I'm completely out of healing crosses. Great. And the wind is blowing in the direction I want to go. So I should probably be careful. As you can see there's a gate over there. So I just need to get over there. But it's probably too far for me to want to make a run for it. Because I don't know what's in between here. It's like kind of foggy down in this valley. The weather's starting to clear up though, so that's good. something is close. You can hear the tattoo and it's flaring up. And I use a thing called a shepherd tone. So that noise sounds like it's always rising in pitch forever. It's like they call it an auditory illusion. I think it's super cool. It's used in like Christopher Nolan films and stuff. That's where I first heard about it, I think. It's really cool. It's definitely close, but I don't see it. I think I wouldn't get snuck up on so much because I made this game, but they're sneaky. I'm making a run for it. Maybe I'll upgrade my strength so I can hold that bow back longer. And you can sprint as much as you want in this place. It's like a safe area, so I keep your heart rate low. Oh, wait, no, I did not see that. So I want to go over here. So this will increase how far I can dodge jump and how long I can hold it. So that can be really helpful. So crouch before I go in. It's good advice. That way you're not like immediately standing and making a bunch of noise on rocks. And those things are rock too, so I've got to avoid that. Oh jeez. Somewhere over there. I think it might be right 
front of me again? No. Wait, over to the left. Oh, jeez. Try and get this before it finds me. And run! So it's somewhere back into the left of me. <laughs> so I'm just making a run for it. Try and lose it on this hill. Oh, it is close. I mean, they're not s fast, but they're not slow either. They're pretty big, so big things take big footsteps. Oh no. I hear a pissed off Bigfoot. And if you go to these, like, little world trees here, there's usually upgrades and stuff, so it's a good reason to go check those things out. It's so, like, instead of going straight towards the, you know, next power, I'm heading towards this tree instead. Hopefully I can find an upgrade. There it is. There's Bigfoot. I tried to make the walk kind of like, you know, that famous footage of Bigfoot walking in the forest. It's here he was just, like, banging on his chest sometimes. Yeah. Does he see me? I think I can get him. Oh, no, that is not, that's not going to go well. Oh, crap. No. It's like, oh, you're the hunter in the game, right? Like, obviously, they're hunting me. Ha <laughs> ha! You would think ragdolls would be easy to make it just behave normally, but oh, those things are such a nightmare. They misbehave all the time. And the system makes no sense to me. It's like you increase the mass, and then things fall faster. It's literally not how gravity works, so it's a total pain to get it to work correctly. But, Ragdolls freaking out is also kind of hilarious, so there you go. Also, this game is made, if you don't already know this, basically mostly by me. Like, I got Clifford Meyer from the band Isis to do the music, and I got Shia that I mentioned to do the drawings, and the writers to do stuff, but then I was the only like actual full-time dedicated developer, so I had to do world art, sounds, lighting, marketing, biz dev, like a million things. But I thought it was really fun. It was a nice change from AAA, I mean, working on games, you know, like Skyrim and Fallout and Starfield, the team was especially huge, so it's nice to get a break from the meetings. Aw, oh, man. Crap. I'm always afraid when I shoot those deer, because they always run off. Cowards. And right now I'm playing what's the demo version of the game. And the demo, all of your progress carries forward to the full version. So if you check it out, you know, you don't have to worry about like replaying it. Because like honestly, that's a big part of why I don't play a lot of demos. Like I don't have time to like replay in half an hour, an hour of every game that I actually like. So I just made it automatically carry forward. You don't even have to manually copy the saves. Like, to be honest, I'm kind of shocked more people don't do it. Because, assuming your save file in your game works this way, all you have to do is go into Steam and you like put one number. You're like, this is my demo, this is my full game. They know about each other, copy the file over. But, you know, whatever. Everything in games is hard, so making sure you have a save file that works between two, I guess, can be complicated sometimes. But in my case, it's pretty straightforward. I just wanted it to work that way from the start. 
And so I'm heading over towards this fire here, right? Because I do not have fire arrows, right? But I have arrows that I can light on fire. So get next to the fire. And where is that stinking tree? Wait, is there another one? Oh man, there's another one. So I'm just gonna light him on fire. <laughs> it's not so bad once you get fire on your arrows. But you can find the fire arrows in the demo area, but that's like a nice way to get around that, basically. notice it's like saving every minute or so. Basically, as long as you're not in combat or in the air, then I autosave. Obviously, I had to add that in the air check because that happened to me once and it was like, oh, autosave. I'm like, I'm falling to my death right now. <laughs> like, that uh, ended poorly, so I added that check as well. Yeah. Smell it, maybe. Oh, there it is. You can take a shower. Ooh. You might notice there's like tower up there, right? So that is where I could get another arrow type. But there's something over there. Like, so I'm gonna avoid it for now. <laughs> Try. I have quite a bit of that energy right now, and I'd like to lock that in and not lose it. I think I'm gonna make a break for it, because I don't want that thing to find me. Though, debatably, I probably should not run then if I don't want it to find me. You might notice the ring lights up, actually. That's how I indicate the heart rate. It gets warmer and warmer. Then eventually you'll see here, I'm gonna go sprint until it shuts off. Like, boom, my shaft power's all shut off. I'm out of energy. But I can upgrade that calm stat to have it, my heart rate go down faster. I think it might be seeing, oh jeez, they're getting closer. I'm making a run for it. Dodge jump. And the, you can hear the wind sort of pick up as you get closer and closer to like taking some falling damage. I'm, I'm fairly forgiving with the fall damage because you can get the Sasquatch punched pretty far, but it's obviously still a thing. The creatures take falling damage too, though, so. Let's go in here and use some of our energy. my health actually because this will increase my max health but also like how fast you heal because you might notice you have to like pull out that cross and wait to sacrifice it so that speeds it up a little bit maybe get a little bit more stealth and I level or change the cost like independently so just because I leveled up one stat doesn't mean the other one is more expensive because I always thought that was kind of annoying so you're like, well, I didn't actually level up that one. Why is it now more expensive? So maybe I'll get that one as well. Make sure I'm all fully restocked. You might notice it says I need a bigger quiver now if I want to hold more arrows. Because I just have like this tiny starting quiver. It can only hold like six arrows or something. Or five, I guess. There's the five in there and the one on my bow. See, I forgot to. So now I'm going to see if I can get to that tower. Right over there is the end of the demo area, actually, because you're in this top part of the forest, and there's a whole valley below. Right now it's kind of foggy. It gets a little less foggy when you shoot this arrow, so can't quite make it down there. The sun is getting lower, too. And Bigfoot is, of course, coming to punch me in the face. Oh, I completely with that shot. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> Bigfoot is actually quite hard, especially for, for a lot of people. It does quite a bit of damage. 
I'm sure I'll, I'll say that and be like, oh, I got Bigfoot, it's no problem, and I'm gonna get completely Sasquatch punched into oblivion for sure. So of course I lost those arrows, which is great, because there's something huge up here. And a Bigfoot. There it is. There's the... You see the music changes sometimes when you get close to like these legendary creatures that only show up once. That is an extra big horn beast. It's the elder horn beast. So their antlers sort of keep on growing forever. So that one has this massive rack of antlers. It's totally fine. I got Bigfoot, giant horn beast. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. You might notice the sounds change a little bit too when it rains, like this becomes like mud. And, and there's actually a mud system, so if you walk on something dirty like that, you will track footprints onto something you normally wouldn't, like the stones. Normally you're not leaving footprints on that, but if you have muddy feet, you will for a little bit. So I got fire arrows now. Eternal entry. I'm not gonna read it for now, but collecting them. You can read them later when it's safe. And it is definitely not safe right now. So I'm gonna try and actually light a fire here so that I can get a bunch of free fire arrows. Light this pesky dude on fire. Or completely miss, you know, one of the two. Ha! Oh, jeez. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Oh god, I'm out of fire arrows. Or, I'm out of regular arrows, actually. I'm just gonna light everything on fire and then hope it dies. That's my strategy. Or stab it. Come in. Oh, jeez. Oh, Man, big one. Oh, my God. Protect me, fire. Oh, no. <laughs> I am oh. not. Oh, I'm. I told you I was going to get killed by Bigfoot as soon as I was like, oh, it's so easy. It is not, in fact, easy. But that's one of the nice things, too, is I don't have to kill the giant one. I could come back later and get much better stuff and then more arrows and then try it again. Which I might do. I might avoid it for now. It's pretty hard to kill. Got some more journal entries, though. travel system. And here's another one of those subtle things is it sometimes you might be jumping around where you're going in a region trying to like you know go back and kill some things or find the journals but the last gate that you used gets this little horn god icon on it so you just remember like oh yeah that's the one. You don't even have to check and look through the, the portal to look at the image. Oh god I completely forgot to restock because I was talking. I think I need now that I have the fire arrows right, I can restock those. And you can see this counter here with the digits. That's how many of that item I get. So right now I get three healing crosses. So I'm just going to explore the region a little bit more now that night is about to come. It'll be fine. Instead of going to the demo warning, which, by the way, I do just let you keep playing for the demo. It doesn't, like, hard stop you or anything. It's just like, here's the end of the demo. Do you want to keep playing? Like, I don't want to quit. Keep playing. And there's invisible walls if I try and, like, jump over those. Like, people have literally spent hours trying to get past those, but then I showed them a picture of what the, the invisible walls actually looked like, and it just, like, completely seals off everything, even on the top and the bottom. Because one person somehow like fell under the map and tried to sneak past it, but it doesn't work. It's almost at time. Getting stocked. Let's see what's over this way. Let's see, actually, that there's one of those little world trees. So I'm gonna place a marker. And, like click your attack button or whatever when you're in the spirit arrow and you can leave a marker. 
And that shoots another beam up into the sky. Uh oh. <laughs> I, I hear somebody else. will respawn and you can fight them again and you're like you know what actually that's a perfectly legit strategy it's it's just like the souls games in a way it's where like yeah sometimes you might want to grind your level a little bit not that it's a grindy game but if you want to you could try and do that to level up a little bit because the creatures in later regions give you like way more experience like if you tried to get to max level in this first region ugh, like, i mean if you want you could try that <laughs> It took a while. I think I told someone it was like, oh, you have to kill like 140 of those tree golems to get the max level, and that's just that one level too. So, like, uh, it seems not efficient to do it that way. But on the earlier levels, to get a little bit, that's it's more reasonable. It was hilarious watching people at like live shows when the storms would come actually because it has like the controller vibration and everything it's like ah! <laughs> same with the tree guy in sasquatch those always had big impact and they've been really fun to watch the streamers and their reactions to that i'm almost in that tree and this beam automatically goes away i don't make you like open up your map and Repick the marker and remove it. It's just like once I get close, this thing will go away because I got there. I do not need it anymore. If you want to put it back, you can. But I don't know why you would. Because if I died too, then it would leave its own marker. So now I have way more arrows than I can hold. So hopefully at some point I get a new quiver. Spoilers, so that's actually in the, the main game. You don't get it in the demo. Early on, I did not have that knife. The game got so much more fun once I added that. Oh, there's two. Oh, don't run away. Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. Fire time. You might hear my cat meowing a little bit. Spirit arrow also functions as a light source. Right now my arrow's on fire, so I don't really need it. But as night falls, it can be pretty dark at the start. Like as the sun goes down and then as the moon goes away. So that can be useful. Eventually there is a power that will help you without needing to switch to that. There's no way I'm getting that arrow back. Switch to my spirit arrow. But it's, you can see it's not, like, horribly dark. It's pretty dark at the start, but you can manage. But I'm going to keep the spirit, spirit arrow out until the moon rises up above. You can see it's a little weird at night. And that's that valley below. So you can see that's more of the playable area. And that's just one of the six regions, too, so there's way more than just that. There's no point in me switching like, off of that right now. There's something nearby. See this giant skeleton taking. 
taken in the view. It's so peaceful. Only it's dead. Yep. Aha! I'll get that in a minute. I'm so close to this thing. Let me get the energy from that. some fires burning down below in a region far off. And this map is about five times as big as Skyrim, which I know sounds like absurd, but Skyrim's actually pretty compressed and we built that. It's kind of a little bit more of a Disneyland style approach because it's all about going to dungeons really. It's not as much about the wilderness, and, but this is a hunting game, right? I actually tried a map that was way, way smaller. It, it didn't play well. It felt really weird. It felt like too fast in between all the locations. And I wanted this to feel like this big open wilderness with like the giant mountains and everything. And you just can't actually do that when it's that compressed. And honestly, like that was not the hard part of making this game at all. Like systems and marketing and all that, that's all way harder. Like this is my sixth open world game. So I was like, you know, I'm not worried at all about being able to make a giant open wilderness like this. And, and that went fine, actually. The tools are really nice. It, you can just like paint the dirt and the rocks super fast. And it's all hand placed. It's not procedural or anything. Because I actually very, very specifically want to control the sight lines of like having this view of the valley and ha not having the trees block views that I think are important. So I'm just going to see if I can get back to that gate. Oh, yeah, and that's where I died, actually. So I dropped my currency there. So should I do the gate, or try and get my death energy? Let's go get my death energy. And the moon is going to crest up over the, you know, giant ridge of skulls. Which is supposed to be sort of like Seneca rocks a little bit. Which, Seneca is the name of my other daughter. Something else died over here too. And a lot of people ask also, like, oh, this game is using all this fancy and real stuff. Can it run on my computer? And actually, usually I play test this game on the Steam Deck, and it runs like 30 to 50 FPS on that. It runs it on low, but low I think looks still pretty good. Like it looks mostly like the real game, and runs pretty well, and I'm pretty happy about that. But for people with even older computers, there's like a potato mode that's actually literally what it's called, see, potato mode, and that just like drops everything way, way down. Actually, you want, I can show you. So let's go potato mode. Hopefully it doesn't crash on me. Usually it's fine. So then it turns off shadows and makes it even lower res, but then it runs like 60 FPS even on integrated graphics cards, and those things are not useful really most of the time, so it's, it's nice to have that option. I prefer to play on high most of the time, and you can always adjust like your FPS cap. There's DLSS and XESS, so you can do resolution scaling. You can do like frame generation is in there too. I'm not on an NVIDIA card right now. I have one on my laptop, but this one's an AMD system. And there's the built-in resolution scaling also if you don't want XESS. It's, you know, plenty of options there. You can even see like your full frame statistics. So am I GPU bound or CPU bound? Usually it's GPU bound, honestly. Like even my oldest computer that I have, the CPU is fine. And this whole game is done in Blueprint, which is like a visual scripting system. And some people are like, oh, it's not real coding. It's too slow. And that's totally not the issue. Like you can do dumb things in real code too. I would say this is the most friendly of the regions too. 
gets it. You might have seen in the intro some of that stuff, but it's a little bit wilder than this. So it's like oh, it's the Sequoia Woods simulator. <laughs> yeah, I do like redwoods. Actually, it always kind of bothered me how small some trees are in games. Like, trees can be really tall. <laughs> Feels weird if they're all like 20 feet tall. They're definitely stalking me. Probably following my footprints. Not exactly being careful here. Ha! Oh, my Bigfoot hears me. You can use that to your advantage, though, honestly. You can be like, I'm gonna make a bunch of noise and then get in a good spot. And then they'll come and try and investigate it. You can also distract them with arrows, right? You like shoot an arrow, they hear it, and they'll come for it. damage got me. So, this is the Axis Unseen. This is my solo indie dev game. It's a heavy metal horror game where you hunt monsters from folklore. Hope you like checking it out. So, thanks.